and all other signs that the rest of the world wants to get the hell out of the dollar and away from the US has been so blatantly obvious and so upfront that I don't know how anybody can see that as people exiting the building as it's starting to burn down. And the banking system failures the last two weeks were a sign that the building's on fire. Welcome to Gold Silver Pros. Searching for the best precious metals deal? Shop with our trusted partner, Arc Silver. Access special deals on silver, gold, and platinum through our website, or call 307-264-9441. Hey everyone, this is Rob Keens with goldsilverpros.com. I'm recording this on March 23rd, 2023, about uh, 3.30 in the afternoon central time. And I'm not going to have a heavy research piece today, guys. Just wanted to talk about what's going on in the market. Gold and silver are up right now at the time of this recording. Gold is at $19.95 and 28 cents US, almost hitting the critical $2,000 level. It did punch up against $2,000 a couple of hours ago. Tested the $2,000 price a couple of times and came back down and settled right into that 1995, 1996 range. Silver is trading at 2309. They're both up today, gold up about 1.3% and silver about a half a percent. Not bad on the price action. Why are they up? In addition, why is Bitcoin also up? Bitcoin's up quite a bit as well. Um, so I think what's happening is people are seeing what's happening in the banking system. And they're deciding to move into what they think are going to be safe havens. Bitcoin's trading at $28,239, up over $1,000 on the day. The cryptocurrency complex is doing pretty good. Litecoin is up $11. Uh, Ethereum is up $78. XRP is even up a little bit, although that almost never changes. Uh, most of them are up. I'm seeing green across the cryptocurrencies and bond rates have come down, which is interesting. The two and the 10 year bond rates have come down, which signals that the market thinks that short term risk has come down just a bit because it's saying, OK, we'll take a little bit less interest for uh, for our debt issuance or to get people to buy our debt. So I think the market is starting to come down off the immediate risk after the banking system. But I think what's happened is people have figured out what comes next. So what comes next? Well, if you look at all the stuff that's been happening, the, the Belt and Road Initiative, the BRICS, the alternative currencies, the alternative, uh, you know, the supranational currency uh, between China and Russia, Russia backing uh, its ruble or limiting it with gold and, and using it to facilitate its oil trade, uh, Russia banning SWIFT now for domestic banking transactions, still in it for international, so they can be a part of that international system. But domestically, they are going to rely on their own system plus blockchain. Their banking um, members or their banking elite basically came out and said, you can see it's de-dollarization. And you can literally see as we sit here and watch the news, as, as you guys sit here and watch this video, the entire dollar system is unraveling right before our eyeballs. The dollar system is falling apart right now, and it's manifesting in many different ways. It's manifesting in the fact that our bonds are not worth what they used to be because of higher interest rates, and that's crashing the portfolios of a lot of banks in the system that bought that paper and put it on their balance sheet as an asset when we know a lot of that debt's going to go bad and a lot of it's going to be written down, which hasn't even happened yet. We're just talking about the overall face values falling because rising interest rates, face values fall on bonds and rates go up. Remember that rule from our finance classes. So as those asset valuations come down and the bubble has burst on the bond market and on the stock market, companies and banks are starting to struggle. Their assets are not worth as much. They're not as liquid. Depositors are pulling their money out, knowing I think that there's risk in the system. So everybody domestically knows that the banks are insolvent because why would you have 50, $550 billion come out in the U.S. banking system in a week after those two bank crashes, after we had the second and third largest bank failures in U.S. history in the same week, days after each other? I think people have figured out the banking system's not sound. They've known that for quite some time. I think all the chatter around Fed now and the digital dollar and uh, the cryptocurrencies, you know, People have known since 2007, 2008, the banking system was insolvent. So at the first sign of trouble, people go and grab their money out of the system. At the same time as everybody else is getting rid of the banking system, Russia wants to get out of SWIFT. Everybody wants to get out of you know, the Western banking model and, and do their own trade agreements and their own uh, current, form their own currencies and bolster their own central banks. 
and use alternative technologies like Russia using blockchain. You know, those types of things are a manifestation of people being tired of this dollar system, being tired of the dollar debt system, the petrodollar, being tired of exported inflation from the United States, being tired of exported war from the United States and conflict and, and uh, political hegemony and all that kind of stuff. The world is tired of it. And the reason gold and silver are now rising, I believe, is because the world sees what's happening. Everybody's walking out of the U.S. dollar system as fast as they can. It's not an outright run because the city's not burning, but it's like a fast walk where people are looking around going, I need to get out of here as fast as possible. Let's build our own systems and get out of Dodge because this thing is going to come down. And I think that these bank failures happened before the regulators thought it would. I think, you know, the FDIC call we saw back in November which we put on the program here recently where they said, we know the system's you know, bankrupt and we can't tell the American public, but we know what's going to happen and we have to pick winners and losers. And then the banks failing and then the FDIC and the Fed and the Treasury doing what they said they would do, picking the winners or losers, even breaking precedent over who's supposed to get the money in a bankruptcy proceeding uh, or an insolvency. You know, they're rewriting the rules as we go along and they seem to have this playbook, but I don't think that they expected those banks to actually go out so quick because while they clamped down and did what they did, had to do very quickly, you can see yesterday Yellen made remarks about no further you know, support, and then the market starts crashing. She comes back out, oh, no, we can put more deposits in the system. So I don't think that they were ready for this quite yet. I think their response shows that they weren't quite ready, that it freaked them out. If you look at what they did, they went and guaranteed those deposits from SVP and Signature Bank like that, and then they immediately said the existing share and bondholders, you get nothing. Now, that, that was some vicious stuff that went on because they put every dollar towards backing deposits. Why? They don't want a run on the banks at this moment. They're not ready. If they were ready for the run on the banks, they wouldn't have done it the way that they did it. They're protecting the deposits because they're not ready for the big crash in the banking system yet. And I think they're not quite ready because the CBDC, CBDC systems, the digital dollars and digital renminbis and digital pounds or whatever each country is going to have, they're almost there, but not quite. They're still not done testing the rails or testing international transactions yet. They're not done building all the connector pieces, I don't think. And so while FedNow is going to become live here this summer, and that's part of uh, the U.S. central bank digital currency system in that it's a transfer mechanism from the Fed directly to people's bank accounts, which they're going to need if they're going to manage the money supply out of people's bank accounts. And that's how that's going to work. It's how it's written in, in their papers. So, so we know that the Fed is turning it up in, in June, July, in the summer, but they're going to have to beta test and get transactions going through it. So I don't think that they're ready right now just to push the button on a production version of the central bank digital dollar. I, I don't. Signs are not there that they have. And now could have been that they've already tested all this before. And this is just, you know, the Kabuki theater end of it or the public end of it. Oh, now we're testing this just in time and maybe they're already ready. Yes. If you're a conspiracy theorist, you could say that. But I think the conventional signs are they're not quite ready. So I think this banking failure uh, kind of surprised them a little bit, the regulators, because they know it's coming. They didn't expect it to come in this way or in this format. And I think the way they reacted to that showed what they were afraid of. They're afraid of a run of deposits on the system. They're not ready yet. Uh, they, they stand by ready to inject liquidity and to you know, go back to quantitative easing. Um, but I don't think they're ready just yet by the remarks of Powell. So I think all of this caught them off guard. They're not quite where they wanted to be. They don't have all their ducks in a row. And so I think we're on a very slippery slope where if we start crashing down again, the new system's not quite ready to go into place. We could have a nasty transition and it's in those types of transitions that gold and silver will shine because gold and silver are going to be a way that you will can transfer value. You can pay somebody for something other than doing barter of skills. Uh, you can pay somebody for something that they'll recognize if the currency is burning and the banking system is shut down and the new systems aren't quite ready yet and, and the government's panicking, which is where I think we are. This is where I think we are in all of this. And so I think that gold and silver are even more important right now because it's the only thing that'll make any sense when the shit hits the fan and the new banking system's not quite ready and they're trying to keep the old one going, you know, by pouring water on the fire and not realizing, you know, that they're making it worse. So I kind of think that's where we are right now. And this is just the feeling that I get. But you see Russia banning SWIFT. You see Saudi Arabia and Iran working on economic deal brokered by the Chinese. I mean, 
the, the things that have come out in the last six to nine months or the last year around geopolitical realignment, realignment of the banking system and all other signs that the rest of the world wants to get the hell out of the dollar and away from the U.S. has been so blatantly obvious and so upfront that I don't know how anybody can see that as people exiting the building as it's starting to burn down. And the banking system failures the last two weeks were a sign that the building's on fire. And I think the world knows it. I think people are going to gold and silver for that reason. I think we they're going to cryptos because cryptos are an alternative potential currency. But I think last year's meltdown of the cryptos is going to keep the cryptocurrency complex from replacing gold and silver as a safe haven asset. I do think, though, that people are looking at cryptos and Bitcoin especially as potential beneficiaries of the banking system meltdown, thinking that people are going to start using them a lot more. Prices will rise as adoption rises, both private adoption and potentially some countries maybe even facilitating cryptos in an emergency case. The news that Russia wants to use uh, these ledgers to run their banking system, they don't want to do it on a SWIFT type of system, they actually want to, want to run it on a ledger. I think the ledger systems are going to get more popular and they're going to raise in value. I always thought Bitcoin would go back up at least one more time. Are there going to be replacements for gold and silver is either money or as uh, last haven, you know, uh, last resort safe haven asset? No, because if they would, they would be in the banking system. It would be in Basel three. It'd be codified in their, in their uh, documentation. And it's not. But I do think that the the crypt, the private cryptos are going to get bit up and that technology is going to become even more important because I think it's going to be used. Whether or not you use the actual coin, people are going to use digital ledgers. That's here to stay and it's going to become like the Internet. It's going to be ubiquitous and everywhere and everything's going to be on a ledger eventually. I, I, it just makes too much sense. They're too efficient at what they do and there's too many benefits not to adopt ledger technology. Whether the private cryptos will be great going forward, I have questions, although I think the prices are definitely going up. Of course, Bitcoin's trading almost 30000 again. And you see those prices start to come up. And, and I predicted that that would happen. And I think cryptos will go up right along with gold and silver. But I think gold and silver is going to be more of the currency or the money should the system melt down and we don't have the ready replacement. Now, I could be wrong. They could have the digital dollar 100% ready to roll out, but they haven't announced how that would happen. And typically they want to get the public used to it. So they're going to say, well, it's going to be a card or it's going to be an app on your phone or it's going to be all the above or it's going to be you know a, a debit card or whatever they're going to do, coupon system, you know, whatever they're going to do, you've heard nothing about that. And it's not that they couldn't just come up with it really quickly. It's that you have to get people socialized into it. And that's what it's the socialization and the lack of, and it's all the negativity towards everything crypto because of the FTX scandal here in the U S which makes me think that they're not quite ready to push their own central bank digital currency, because what they would do is start doing things like, well, they are cracking down on Bitcoin and stuff like that, but they're but they're not at the same time saying why their central bank digital currency is ready to go, why it's going to solve all these problems with crypto and the failure of the dollar and all that kind of stuff. So because I'm not getting that socialization in the financial media, I don't think that they're yet, there yet. I think they're going to start talking positively about central bank digital currencies after they know that they're ready to go and they're ready to push the green button on that. And so I think that's where we are. We kind of got caught a little bit too early in the crash. I had the feeling that maybe 2024 was a better year for it. I just got the feeling that this year would be a transition one economically and politically and culturally in some ways, and that they wanted this year to kind of be, it's going to crash a little bit, but try to keep it from going all the way. And the next year is probably where the, the crash would happen because there's too many things that they're working on that need to occur this year for uh, the banking and financial system to be ready. In fact, I could even say that it probably needs a couple of three more years, but at least another year. So we're going to pay attention to 2023 because it could be chaos of a different form than, than everybody thinks. Yes, this could be the big financial reset, but it could be that the next system's not quite there and that we go through this weird ass transition period where people have to figure out their own solutions while the government's like, oh crap, we're not quite ready. What do we do here? Or the government rolls out stuff before it's ready and it doesn't take. If you look at Nigeria, for example, they recently rolled out a cryptocurrency, and I think early adoption was only 0.25% of the population, even though they can only pull out $45 a day from the ATM and they were limited to $200 a week in getting money out of the bank. And the bank had pulled 85% of circulating supply in Nigeria, the, the Africa's largest economy. 
even with all those limitations, people did not adopt the the digital currency because they know what it is and they don't want it. They, they don't want it. So I, I don't know that psychologically, even with the private cryptos and, and how much adoption they have had, that people are going to transfer their love for the private cryptos over to these central bank digital currencies. It's Culturally, we're not there yet. So I have a feeling that they needed probably another couple of years. Um, but we're just going to have to see you know, what happens there. I think we're a little early for the crash that they wanted to happen, but it makes having gold and silver even more appropriate and even more critical right now, because if the new systems aren't ready, say what you will about the new systems, at least they're new systems that everybody would adopt. So if we're going from green dollars to purple dollars, or we're going from paper dollars to electronic dollars, whatever the change will be, we're going to adopt that because everybody's adopting it. But if that system isn't ready yet, then they'll have to go to something in between in the meantime, and it's going to cause chaos. Think about how it would cause chaos with businesses trying to pay each other, people trying to go to restaurants, people trying to buy shoes and gas. It would be a nightmare. So I, I think they're trying to keep it on life support, get it to where that system is ready. They can roll it over. But in the meantime, that having gold and silver and even some extra dollar, just a few extra dollars of cash would probably be wise, you know, at this point in time. But that's why gold and silver are going up, why gold's almost at 2000. It's 1993, as I'm looking at it right now. Still up over $23, almost 24 bucks on the day. And I think it'll continue to go up. I think we probably have new floors in gold and silver. And every time I say that, I'm wrong because the price will come back down. <laughs> but I mean floors in terms of long term. Could the price come down tomorrow to 1850 on gold? Sure. But I think that the I don't think that we're going under 2000 for any length of time anymore because I think risk is so high in the system and people realize the risk that gold and silver are going to stay elevated. Um, I don't think, however, that silver really goes back to 30 and gold really goes back to like 2200 range until we have another big banking collapse. But it does not surprise me that gold and silver are up based upon the second and third largest banks collapsing, Credit Suisse almost collapsing, and then uh, First Republic almost collapsing. We almost had four. Uh, totally collapsed banks. Two of them kind of got saved, but they're all essentially they're all going to get parted up and broken up. But it, but we kind of saved the collapse on two of them. You know, that was four at one time, and I think that that's caused people to go to safety, and so not taking as many risk positions. And yes, it's amped up money going into the cryptos and gold, silver, and I think that that a certain amount of that money will stay there no matter what. It's not going to come out anytime soon. And then I look to see people move in the market, like the stock market, over to safety assets, things like staples and commodities and utilities and stuff like that. Maybe go for dividend uh, stocks. And I, I'm surprised that the bond rate's coming down right now because of the risk in the system. But that could be based on expectations of the Fed having only just raised a quarter point and then maybe not doing any more raises, that interest rates are still coming off because they've been coming off since the bank failures. I think because the market expects the Fed to stop raising rates. And so uh, the rest of the interest rate complex is starting to come down saying, yeah, rates have got to come down. And I think that may be a false signal. I don't know if the Fed's going to raise again, but I don't think they're going to pivot and ease just yet either unless we see a big Lehman style collapse, then they'll probably do it. Uh, so I think we're kind of in between. This is kind of like uh, we're in, the, you know, uh, uh, we're in, in the in-between of, uh, we're not really in a chaos stage. We just went through a mini chaos stage, but we're kind of in the eye of the storm. Everything looks okay right now. Uh, uh, um, however, underneath the surface, it is a raging inferno and it's a tidal wave brewing and the tidal wave hasn't come yet, but you can start to see the big waves crash. A big wave will crash and we'll survive and we'll be okay. And then another one come then we'll survive and we'll be okay. You know, but what we really need is a giant seawall because <laughs> here comes a tsunami. And that's what they built in Galveston after the big uh, hurricane they had at the beginning of the last century. They built a seawall. If you've ever been down to Galveston, the, the city is actually built up off of the beach, off of the ground. I think it's like a 15 or 20 foot seawall that uh, they put in place for hurricanes and um, still get hurricanes, but it does reduce the amount of flooding and damage. Um, and the question is, have you built your seawall? Have you bought gold and silver? Have you thought about banking? Have you thought about how to operate when you don't have a bank, especially if you have a small business and paying employees? I've got that situation. It's a lot of fun. But think about all that. Think about risk in the system. But I think the world knows what's coming. The world knows the dollar is going to collapse. So this is the punchline to the title of the video. The world knows the dollar's dead. It's over. I just wrote an article for J.M. Boyan where 
uh, I pick a coin of the week every week and coins that I like and people kind of pay attention to if they want to add to their collection. But I didn't pick a coin this time. I picked an old 1929 Federal Reserve note uh, because those were the redeemable ones. And I basically said, buy this now because this is a piece of history because this bad boy is on its way out. And I wrote that because the dollar's out. The dollar is dead. Now, it's not dead right this minute, but you can tell it's over. Uh, the banking system is starting to collapse. Uh, bond valuations are coming down. It was all a big bubble. Real estate's coming down. All of our bubbled assets are starting to come off. We're hitting a deflationary run. We're going to hit another inflation deflationary run before the big one. We know that it goes in waves. But along the way, the world is figuring out this system is over. And they're, they're not quite sprinting to the exits, but they're fast walking, trying not to be too conspicuous. They're building their own systems. They're embracing digital ledger technology in private cryptos. Uh, they're building their own wire systems. They're putting contracts in gold or different currencies. Previously, uh, very antagonistic nation states towards each other are now coming together and, and the deals negotiated with, with our competitors. Uh, the market for United States, anything is shrinking. The market for United States dollars is shrinking. The market for United States bonds is shrinking. The, the market for United States, anything is shrinking, except for our energy and our natural gas. Europe needs that. But the market for anything U.S. is shrinking. And the rest of the world is moving on, baby. They've already put their boats in the water. They're pushing forward. They're building their own infrastructure. And that's why gold and silver have risen. You would think that gold and silver would have risen right after the bank crashes like this. But I think what this is, is a capitulation of the market saying, after we looked at how deep the issues were and the banking collapses that we just saw, oh yeah, it's time to go back to gold and silver. And I think, you know, we are now at a new plateau where gold and silver is going to move up. Now it could come back under these numbers very quickly, but I mean, in the long term, it's not coming back under those for quite some time, for any length of time. I think it's going to continue to go up because we're going to see this news come out and people know. You, you can't necessarily go the dollar and the U.S. bond this time because that's what's collapsing. So the precious metals are going to get more of a bid. The cryptocurrencies will get more of a bid as well. And Bitcoin is coming back just like I thought. And uh, Ethereum and all of those. So we'll continue to watch that. That's going to be it. This, this one was just not heavy research, just my feelings about what's going on. And a realization today, more than anything, that it's the end of the U.S. dollar. It's finally over for all intents and purposes. Yes, we have another few months or a couple of years left in its current form but it's it's out and the world has moved on from the us as being the dominant anything anymore political cultural icon trading partner reserve currency the world it's all over it's done and over today that that's that's what the realization is and that's why precious metals are going to do well and they're basically going to be one of the only safe places you can go to when the stuff finally does hit the fan which i don't think is that far off probably going to happen a little bit faster than I thought, and a little bit faster than the authorities probably were ready for, judging by you know their reaction to the recent bank collapse. Anyway, that's my view on things. Thank you guys so much for joining the channel. Until next time, this is Rob Keats with Gold Silver Pros. Hey, thanks for watching. We selected these videos just for you. Check them out. And remember, $4.99 a month keeps the lights on and the channel going. So join our Gold Silver Pro supporter membership. We appreciate your support. Keep stacking.